So for this video, it's part two of passive accessory motion testing at the hip. And for this one, we're specifically going to look at both anterior and posterior glide. Now the challenge with this is we do have to have the patient move from a supine to prone position to look at both. So let's start with supine since we're already here. And for this, we're spe specifically going to be looking at posterior glide of the ephemeral acetabular joint. To allow you to visualize this better, we're going to use this right side uh, as our reference limb. And so we're going to bring the individual up, knee flexion, and then from here, we can bring them up to about 90 degrees of hip flexion. Now there's a couple different things that we can do to improve the overall kind of specificity of this. Uh, one would be to uh, have the individual slide a little bit closer to us on the table such that they're close, so go ahead and slide towards me. Yep, perfect, okay. From there, we can also use our hand underneath the hip joint, or we can also use a towel roll, just to provide a little bit of space such that the hip can actually move. Uh, in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the individual up, the knee is going to be approximated right into our shoulder, and from here, we can either use our shoulder, or we can take and interlock our hands on top of the knee as well. So you have a couple different options. Interlocking the hands, providing that force directly down in a vertical fashion, or kind of using this, this uh, uh, pectoral space um, and, and approximating to the knee as well. And then your hand can be a reference hand on the posterior aspect of the hip. Both are acceptable, right? So I'll show both. From this position, you also need to be mindful of the height of the table. If you're already up on your tippy toes, you have nowhere to go. So make sure the table is a little bit lower, such that you can kind of lower your body weight into this. Again, keep in mind, very, very stable, large, lots of congruency joint. You're going to need to build some leverage in order to properly assess. So for the first one, we're going to use um, kind of the approximation technique just with our, our anterior shoulder and then we're going to push down into that hip. From here, we're asking better, worse, no different with regards to signs and symptoms. Additionally, if you're a little bit smaller frame and you're finding this is challenging, you can create a little bit more force by actually taking your uh, available hand and grabbing the edge of the table. And so with this, we're going to approximate here, we're going to grab the edge of the table, and then it's not only force going down, but you're also kind of pulling up as well. And so what that would look like is this. And oftentimes the patient will report, yeah, I feel that quite a bit more, because you're just delivering a little bit more force in that posterior direction. All right? Additionally, you can use that interlocking of the hands from here, and then you would bring your elbows along both sides of the thigh and provide that force in that posterior direction as well. While doing that, look at signs and symptoms. Better, or worse, no different. Look at the patient's response. Get your end feel assessment as well as available range of motion. The next one that we're going to look at then is anterior glide. Before this, we need our patient now to flip into a prone position. We're going to stay on the side closest uh, for your reference. So we are switching hips. Just make sure you stay specific when they flip over. If you started on the right side, you need to stay on the right side. But for this, we're going to switch to the left side. A pillow is helpful to bring under the distal thigh and knee to help position the individual in a little bit of hip extension. The reason for that is we want to take advantage of some convex concave rule. All right. Additionally, if you're having some difficulty kind of hanging out in this position, you don't want to hyperextend the knees. So you can grab a bolster and slide it under both legs. So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to find where the gluteal fold is. And your uh, line of force is going to be towards the hip capsule. And so if you can find where the 
uh, greater trochanter is, you know that that is going to be right uh, through the neck of the femur and, and right at the level of the hip capsule. So that gives you some idea of where you need to be uh, placing some force. So then at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to use, again, that hypothalamic eminence. As always, explain what you're doing because you are in some sensitive areas. Uh, you're going to uh, come just lateral, though, to the issue of tuberosity. You don't want that to buffer or, or uh, stop your line of force. And then from here, what you're going to do is you're going to apply that anterior force to the hip. Now, with this, uh, there's probably some lack of specificity due to soft tissue mass. The larger your patient, the more mass that they have within kind of this gluteal posterior lateral hip, the less specificity you're going to have with this technique. So there is a cost benefit analysis that you need to be mindful of while performing this. Additionally, there has been uh, kind of a defined way where you can uh, kind of leverage this a little bit more. And what that would look like is taking the knee into a bit of knee flexion, increasing the degree of hip extension, and then while taking the individual into hip extension, using your opposite hand to glide anterior. However, if you choose to use that technique, that's defined as an MWM, or a mobilization with movement technique, and it no longer has the specificity of a passive accessory motion assessment. So be mindful of when and how you would use that. So how to go with both posterior and anterior glide with the pure poly, and let me know if there's any questions.